Clarsen. It will be Rangers and Ryan Kent to get us underway. Rangers playing in the all blue home kit. Ajax in their home kit as well. The red stripe of a shirt down the centre in the back with the white sleeves, the white shorts and the white socks. And the ball is straight out of play as Rangers Champions League adventure proper gets underway for the first time in 12 years. And here is Daley Blint, the former Manchester United man, plays it forward for Ajax from the throw. Picked up by Rangers and Tillman. We'll run you through the lineups in a moment, but Ajax win the ball back just inside their own half, playing from right to left. Good interception by Goldson, who will send the ball all the way back to McLaughlin, who is quickly closed down by Berghaus, all over the halfway line. And Ajax will tidy that up at the back. So Rangers with McLaughlin in goal. The back four of Tavernier, Goldson, Sands and Barisic. Ahead of them, it's Kamara and Lundstrom with Wright, Tillman and Kent supporting Antonio Cholak up front. And once again, Alfredo Morelos left on the bench by Giovanni Van Bronckhurst. Here are Ajax in possession and it's the former Rangers man, Calvin Bassi. Record sale for Rangers this summer. Ajax's second most expensive player behind Bergwijn in their history on the ball. Plays it forward out to the left-hand side and the orange booted Daly Blint over the halfway line now and here is Bergwijn in brilliant form. Seven goals in six games for Ajax this season and Taylor coming forward now for Ajax to the edge of the penalty area. Left-hand side plays it forward. It's poor for Blint and it's out for a Rangers goal kick. So Ajax with Pasveer, their regular number one in goal. The back four of Wrench, Timber, who had a brilliant season last season. He's just been named the Eredivisie Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year for last season as well. Bassi and Blint ahead of them. It's Tadic, formerly of Southampton, the captain. Alvarez, who Chelsea tried very hard to sign on deadline day, but Ajax having lost multiple players over the summer, two big ones in Anthony and Lissandro Martinez to Manchester United, just would not let him go. And Taylor complete the midfield. Berghaus, Bergwijn. Gerus up front as Rangers win a free kick just inside their own half, nil-nil. Yeah, I mean, Rangers are actually, you know, physically a very strong team. Um, and in comparison to Ajax, that is something that they can really work hard on because I think if they can get free kicks and corner kicks with good quality from dangerous areas, I think they can get some capsule out of that because they are man for man quite a bit taller and more physical. But technique-wise, no, they might not be quite as good, we shall see. Picked up by Tillman for Rangers, just inside the Ajax penalty area. He's being held up by two defenders. So we'll squeeze the ball out to the left-hand side. Here is Barisic as the who start to ring around, the Johan Cruyff Arena. But Rangers enjoying a spell of possession here with Goldson now in the centre circle. Plays it out to the right-hand side and Tavernier, the captain, didn't sit forwards. Won't quite be brought down by Cholak and won't find its way through to Scott Wright either. And the ball is out for an Ajax throw. A couple of team news decisions that we expected. Pad in terms of Cholak starting and McLaughlin as well as Van Bronckhorst got those two decisions right. Well, Cholak's an absolute stick on because uh, Morelos isn't fully fit yet. And uh, there'll always be questions about one question you don't ask about Morelos, can he score goals? So if he can come on and you know be lively and, and give a good 20, 25 minutes at the end of the game, he could be a very important player. But that's as much about to, to do with his fitness and his mindset as well. So. That's a big player and, uh, yeah, the goalkeeper as well. I, it, it was made to sound like a big decision. I don't think it was. I think it was a stick on. He was always going to start tonight. And it is McLaughlin in bright orange. He plays the ball forward to the halfway line. It won't be won by Lundstrom and picked up now by Ajax. And then number 20, Mohamed Kourouz, who scored in the last match against Canberra. A 4-0 victory for Ajax in the Eredivisie. And his reward is his first start of the season in the Champions League this evening. Nil-nil, four minutes played here on Five Live as Ajax have it inside their own half. Do you know, one of the joys of coming to this stadium, we've got brilliant possession right on the halfway line over the top. We'll finish that in a moment because of an attack. Ajax building down the right-hand side. They have the red and white shirts to aim for in the penalty area, but will play the ball back to Edson Alvarez. Halfway through the Rangers half. Central position and here is Timber out to the right hand side once again and Wrench picked up now and swung into the area Good clearance away by Tavernier to the edge of his own penalty area Rangers under pressure here though as Ajax win the ball back But the judge to have been a handball in there Bergwijn kicks the ball away in mild frustration And it will be a free kick to Rangers just inside their own penalty area goalless Well talking about like seeing this 
brilliant view of got we've got a bird's eye view of it and one of the best teams in world football to watch in terms of technique and systems is Ajax it generally always is I just watched them these first five minutes or so I, you, you, you don't know what system they're playing they're all over the place Blind at one moment has been centre midfield another moment he's left back at some points they've been a back three and at some points they're a back four they're all interchangeable with each other it, honestly they are a joy and a confusion to watch <laughs> <laughs> Darcy wins the header, Rangers win the free kick as Goldson goes down, just inside his own half. Yes, interesting to see how Ajax progress under their new manager, Alfred Schroeder. Eric Ten Hag, of course, off to Manchester United in the summer, and that's the thing, it wasn't just player turnover for Ajax, it was losing their manager as well. But there is a history here, you know, and you know, the, the best of their teams often played a 4-3-3, but it was such an adaptable 4-3-3. And that's what they've done tonight, and it certainly looks that style. Goldson's ball over the top just can't quite be taken in his stride by Kent. It was a good delivery from the centre half. Ajax under a bit of pressure inside their own penalty area, play their way out of trouble very well, and Timber will play the ball down the right-hand side. Goal is here on five live as the ball over the top, looking for Bergwijn. It's all the way through to McLaughlin, who just chests it down inside his own penalty area and will play it out to the left-hand side in James Sands. And that's one of the joyous things when you watch some teams in England, they're brilliant at playing out from the back. And some, let's be fair, are not quite so good. You watch your Ajax, it's so natural. It's so comfortable. Hey, they might still make mistakes if they're closed down, but every single defender is so comfortable on the ball. Goal is here at the Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam, and it is Ajax in possession. Ajax, the four-time winners of the Champions League slash European Cup. The last time was the way back in 1995, and as you say, Pat, they're a club that believe that they should be right up there in terms of pushing on into the latter stages, as of course they did when a British side visited here in Tottenham back in 2019. That quite remarkable night, particularly if you're a Tottenham fan. Lucas Moura's hat trick sending Tottenham through on away goals. Ajax in possession. Here is Daly Blint. Plays it to the edge of the centre circle. And I have to say, as we look around the pack stands, five minutes before kickoff, when the songs really got going, the noise in here was absolutely remarkable. We know that Ibrox will provide that once more this season in the Champions League. But as Ajax have it in the centre circle, I'm, I'm holding my notepad and I could feel the vibrations from the stadium coming through that. I'm not sure I've experienced that in a football stadium before as Rangers win the ball just outside their own penalty area. And the ball is all the way back with Goldson, who in turn sends it all the way back to McLaughlin, who is closed down by Kudus. And will be played out to the left-hand side. Tillman won't keep hold of it, though, for Rangers. Kent then goes down over on that far side, but the assistant says that it will be a throw to Rangers rather than anything else. You know, it's, not, it's not the worst thing in the world that Rangers haven't got a huge amount of possession just now. They know how to do that now. They've, they've had that in the Europa League last season. You go away from home, and there's some places you go that you have to just be sensible about it. Let the opposition get the ball in places that are not dangerous. However, at some point, you need to build some sort of bridgehead. You need to get on the ball. And I think that's where it's important that Kent, Ryan Kent, Fabio's player on the left-hand side, and, and Tillman, those quality players need to get on the ball and give those you know, defenders some sort of respite when they possibly can. At the moment, very little possession from Rangers. Yeah, Ajax certainly dominating the ball, as you would expect in their home stadium, with the way that they play as well. Here is Bergvine from the Tottenham man. Plays it off down the left-hand side to Daly Blint. Now in field as Ajax, so patient, just happy to knock the ball around and then go through the gears as Bergvine turns away from the attentions of two blue shirts. Now plays it downfield, half an appeal for offside as Taylor picks it up and fires it in off Kamara and it's behind for the first corner of the game. It goes to the home side, Ajax. Can't afford to switch off like that. Uh, I think it was Kamara. He, he let him run, it was Taylor who made the run there. He, said he thought he was going to run offside. Don't take that chance. See if you think somebody's offside, they're not. <laughs> so you have to chase. So just one little switch on for concentration and it's taken 10 minutes to happen. And so that's not actually too bad. So corner swung in by Tadic, all oh, free header on the edge of the six yard box and it is sent over the bar. What a big chance that was for Yuri and Timber, the 21 year olds. 
who was in such scintillating form for Ajax last season. Big opportunity, not taken. Well, I hardly get the words out saying they hadn't switched off. And he switched off again. I mean, if you're at the near post and you're getting a clean header, an absolutely clean header, with no Rangers players physically near on there, that's that's a real concern again for Giovanni van Bruyck because he'll not be delighted with that. Well, we can tell he's out at the edge of his technical area already, having a shouting ball at his two centre halves. Should be one nil Ajax, but it is still goalless here on five live. Ten minutes gone in this first from Force with great player and he's won the Champions League with Barcelona back in 2004 beating Arsenal one of the big things for Rangers fans they'll know fine well themselves they don't need me to tell it it's uh, when Tavin Tavernier plays Roddy Forsyth was making this point at the weekend when he plays well Rangers tend to play well but that means him getting forward problem is he's against a very good player tonight in Berkhaus you know and to actually leave his post and fly forward considering they've already got in twice behind them already that's pushing Tavernier back and that's a real shame for Rangers because they really need him adding something up the wide areas Timber plays the ball forward will be picked up on the far side for Ajax goal is here on 5 live nice little one two inside the penalty area ball across cleared away by Goldson but again the Dutch champions looking dangerous here in Amsterdam as Blint picks it up on the left hand side Rangers dropping deep here is Bergwijn Ever dangerous, goes for goal. Shot wasn't dangerous on that occasion. Wide in McLaughlin's post. But you can see the confidence that Bergwijn has at the moment. Yeah, he's got confidence going. But I thought the play on the right hand side was more impressive. He's just cut on and had a shot. He's not caught it well. However, on the right hand side, they cut through that Rangers defence as if it wasn't there. And, you know, they are just beginning to motor a wee bit. And that's why I say it's imperative that someone in that midfield specifically gets a hold of the ball for Rangers. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, possession in your own half and you pass it back and pass it along your back line. You need to get some sort of possession. At the moment, they're just really struggling to get on the ball. They do have a throw, though. It will be taken by the captain, Tavernier. Forward looking for Scott Wright, picked up by Chonock. And now Tillman tried to squeeze it out to the left-hand side in Kemp, but it was well read by Ajax. And here is Alvarez all the way back to Remco Pasvia clears long up towards the halfway line goal is here on five live as Ajax give the ball away again Scott Wright though just can't quite make the most of it and Ajax win it back and send it out to this left hand side with Daly Blint just outside his own penalty area mind a commentary of Napoli against Liverpool the other match taking place tonight in Group A coming up for you on five live eight o'clock Ian Dennis and Jonathan will get your team for that of course we'll have updates as well Tottenham against Marseille. John Murray will be across all the action there. Here in Amsterdam. 0-0 between Ajax and Rangers on Rangers return to the Champions League proper for the first time in 12 years. Here is Timber. Plays it forward to Kudus, the striker who has come back very deep to receive the ball and trying to spring an Ajax attack. And once again they come down the right hand side a couple of players over the deflection is behind for an Ajax corner but the combinations that Ajax are building down that right hand side with Wrench and Berghaus are very impressive yeah and they've got an overload in Barisic all the time haven't they you know and because they've got an overload there an overlap they didn't get it quite right there they managed to get a corner out of it but I think Barisic will need a little bit of help quite soon corner for Rangers to defend it's played in low this time laid off by Tadic but only to Scott Wright and Kent will try and counter for Rangers down the left hand side Ajax are getting the red and white shirts back and Kent plays it into one of them and Ajax allow that ball to spin out for a throw Rangers claim it's not going to go their way got to stay switched on here Barisic once again with defending to do down that left hand side as the red and white shirts wait in the penalty area ball fall back to the edge of the box the ricochet will be cleared away by Rangers Cholak back so deep defending that's a good ball to spring Tillman over the halfway line has to check once more trying to find the run through the center of Kent he's still going Tillman he's done really well there all right it's getting the players back the shot driven in by Cholak from 20 yards blocked away Kamara will pick it up left hand side of the penalty area shepherded away by Wrench but Barisic now picks it up first time he's really been able to get forward but just too much on it 
to Kamara, who was right in front of him, only a couple of yards, just needed to caress it. Instead, he fired it at his teammate. And Ajax have it back once more. But Malik Tillman has been such a bright spark in this season so far for Rangers. And there, just another little glimpse, wasn't there, Pat, of what the 20-year-old can do. Yeah, the problem was he picked the ball up and had to run 70 yards. <laughs> By the time he got to the edge of the box, he ran out of gas slightly. But, yeah, he's got real quality. And that's probably the best moment of the game for Rangers. Because not only Tillman went, but three or four blue shots went with him as well. So, if that's the game plan, you know, just sit back a little bit take as much pressure as you possibly can and play on the break. It can work. I watched the game last night when that worked very well. Chelsea fal faltering against Dynamo Zagreb. Here come Ajax down the left-hand side. Taylor, though, sees his ball forward blocked. Ajax will pick it up once more with Bergvine dropping deep and now stepping in field. As you say, part the system is just so fluid. Rangers really having to stay switched on to work out moment by moment what the Ajax players are doing in terms of shape and takes so much concentration when the other side has the ball anyway and they keep switching things up again mentally you have to be so focused as Bassi will well, just um, allow that to run well, Ajax look at the, 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 only the, 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 back, the only person in the back the only person in the back lane that isn't moving is Bassi he's a new sign and he basically generally stays in the centre back everybody else is totally mobile space on the right hand side now as Ajax build again good covering by Sands Berghaus's ball in he's blocked behind for the corner. Well done, Sands. Now that's what we're talking about. There was an overload again there, but he's the left centre back and he's got out there and helped. But he's shouting, he's centre midfielder, left midfield player, get back and help your defender. So the red and white shirts dotted around the penalty area. Tadic is drifting dangerously. Ball is swung in and headed in. Powerful header. And Edson Alvarez runs away in celebration. It's been coming inside the opening 17 minutes. Ajax's pressure pays off, Alvarez scores, Ajax lead Rangers by goal to it. Well, they can't say they weren't born, Rangers. Uh, it's corner kick about seven or eight minutes ago from the other side. And it was a free header at the near post. And I said, well, you can't switch off too often here. Well, they switched off there. I mean, there's absolutely nobody making an attempt to go and get close. To it. You, you cannot be allowed in the centre of the six yard line to have no one attacking the ball apart from Alvarez not one single player now they've linked up and I can't what I've seen is a zonal mark in there but you've got to try and attack the ball as well you've got to get up there and get close to people that is easy, as easy a goal as you will score for a corner kick as you will see um, well done puts it in the bottom corner nice little header but he's doing it as if there's no players there beside him 1-0 and deserved so far and you have to say, Pat, as, as Rangers get us underway once more, they'd had the warning, hadn't they, as you yeah. touched on there, the, the timber header that really should have gone in. That was a free header as well. Warning signs not heeded by Rangers. And I know there was something that frustrated so many Rangers fans at the, the weekend as well, in a different way, but again, from dead ball situations, the quick throw-ins that we know Celtic love to take at Celtic Park just Again, the warning and the warning came and, and it wasn't heeded. It you must know, be so frustrating. Well, well spotted, Ricky, because in the build-up to that, you remember on the right-hand side there, they took a quick throw and two Rangers players were complaining to the referee. That's exactly what happened at the weekend and exactly what Gio Van Broncos didn't want them to do and they did that again on that occasion and that led to them losing the corner kick, which then led to the goal. So 1-0 Ajax leads here on 5 Live as Blimp won't keep that in on the near side and it will be a throw to Rangers. Rangers who enjoyed such a fairy tale run to the Europa League final last season. And of course, that would have put them in the Champions League as well had they won it. So the resilience to come back from that, to get through two qualifying rounds, to reach the Champions League group stages, beating PSV Eindhoven as well. Again, a big force, of course, in Dutch football. There are reasons to believe for Rangers, but there are reasons to be frustrated as well. And that application, when they see the warning signs but don't heed them, I think will be top of the list for Rangers fans listening to us at the moment. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's difficult because you're looking around, all the players are looking around thinking, we need to get the ball, we need to hold the ball, we need to get some sort of foothold. The very, very rarely in this game, and we're nearly 20 minutes in, had an attack where they've had five or six passes together, whereas I is completely dominating the ball. It's imperative they manage to do that. But I can't see them being able to at the moment. Having said that, that resilience you're talking about, that's in Rangers' game. So, you know, don't write this game off yet. 
Well, that is something that was so evident, wasn't it, last season? Never right ranges off in Europe. It's only 1-0. It's 19 minutes played. It's Ajax, though, still in possession, dominating the ball, although they've given it away there through Tadic, their captain. Kent is then cynically chopped down. And it will be a free kick for Rangers midway through their own half. It's got to be a yellow. That's total cynicism. I mean, Kent's gone away there. He's great pace. That, that, he's tackled him on his thigh and just above. Why that's not a, 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 a yellow card, I have no idea. Well, I have a big idea. There might be something got to do with 50,000 people in red shirt and balling here. But that's a, that's a yellow card all day long. Ajax win possession on the halfway line. Leading by a goal to nil in field to Kudas. Halfway through the Rangers half. They just knock it around once more, and here is the goal scorer, Edson Alvarez. Ball forward now, incisive to Kudos. Steps past Lundstrom, lovely turn, still going Kudos. Plays it out to the right-hand side again. Barisic with defending to do. Ike's working it very well, and that's a very good save by McLaughlin. Turns the ball behind from close range for a corner, but it's all Ajax at the moment. It's, uh, I mean, they are playing beautiful football. Eh? It's a kind of joy to watch. But for Rangers fans, you're down in that corner where the older tre pressure is. Well, they're watching, but they're watching through the fingers at the moment. Approaching the midway point of the first half, Ajax looking to double their lead with this corner. Tillman wins the header, sends it to the edge of the penalty area and then gets second contact as it came back in. Spins out of play for an Ajax throw on the left-hand side. Well, it's wonder worth underlining, and I think Rangers fans know this as well. I mean, that, they've, they've lost a goal from a corner kick there. And you, you have to mention it, their best centre-backs playing for the opposition tonight. And he was the core of everything, attacking everything last season. So they really do miss that. And because they've got one or two injuries, and they're playing Sands in there, who's not an absolute natural centre-back, it's very, very noticeable that they are lighter there. They've, they've got plenty of physical qualities. They're a tall team. But centre-halves are different. They can attack it, and they don't have to miss Gassi in that area. Absolutely. Rangers in possession on the left-hand side. And... Yeah, you mentioned the injuries. It is a problem position for them at the moment. John Suter, Philip Helanda still out. Ben Davis is back on the bench, incidentally, after injury. But, of course, losing a player, the calibre of Calvin Bassey. Such a huge part of their season last campaign. Won their Young Player of the Year. Record sale for Rangers when he moved to Ajax and very much went with the best wishes of the club. But, you know, it, of course is something that you have to adjust to and it's difficult to do so. Well, the money they got for him was almost equal to the money you get for getting to the Champions League stages, so they couldn't turn that down. However, um, well, that's is a special player. Ajax coming again. Here is Bergvine, lays it off, almost went for the 1-2 in the penalty area and the ball rolls through to McLaughlin, but the confidence with which Ajax are playing will be a concern to Rangers. Yeah, it's, it's almost like an elongated 5 a game in the playing up front, isn't it? I mean, they pass it, they move off each other, the winters are brilliant, the understanding between those forwards. I mean, they're good players, Bergwijn, Berkus, very, very good players, but very impressed with Tadic as well. We've, we've seen them all before, they can all play, but they're playing in a system that seriously suits them just now. Free kick taken quickly by Ajax as Bassi went down, well read by Tavernier, who sprays the ball out to the left-hand side. It's a great delivery, collected by Kent. As Rangers look to get back on level terms, little slip there. And Rangers could be in here down the left hand side. All oh, right, can't latch onto it. It's laid off by Kamara, back in by Tavernier, but the ball in the end out to the left hand side. Now Barisic surely coming back from an offside position. Yes, he was. Initially, he left it, knew that nobody else was going to get there in a blue shirt, so thought, might as well try my luck. But the assistant on this near side had tracked him, and it's a free kick to Ajax, who still leads by a goal to nil. Better move, though. Much better move from Rangers, though. They got themselves in a very good position there. It was just a little bit of shame when the, cross, the original cross was come in. Wright was favourite to win it. Except he's a winger. <laughs> he just got nudged off the ball there. Had he gone and attacked that with everything he had, he, he would have got his head on it. No one would have got in front of him. And that was a real decent chance that they didn't really take it, they make the best of, which is a shame because I don't know how many chances there are going to be for Rangers tonight. They trail by a goal to nil here in Amsterdam on Five Live. Remember all the reaction to this match on the Football Daily podcast. You can download that 
from BBC Sounds. And you can also listen to our commentary this evening with the final score graphics and the video printer. Just go to the BBC iPlayer or the BBC Sport app and click on Five Live Final Score. Napoli against Liverpool. Commentary to come from 8 o'clock with updates from Tottenham against Marseille as well as Ajax build down the left-hand side. Good ball by Daly Blint to Mohamed Kourouz. In field now to Stephen Bergvine, back to Kudus, they're knocking it around beautifully here, Ajax. Space inside the penalty area, it was a poor ball back across in the end. Cleared away by Lundström, will be picked up by Rangers, but Tadic has it back for Ajax. And the ball is played back now on the halfway line as the Ducks champions just knock it around once more. Dusan Tadic is an interesting one, of course. Southampton fans and those who follow the Premier League will know him from his time there. Captain of Ajax, but his form has been questioned of late and you do wonder players like him with such evident talent, whether they feel as though they have a bit of a point to prove or whether they just shrug all of that off as Ajax come down the right-hand side. Dangerous again into the penalty area. Pull back, won't quite be met in the six-yard box, but Rangers can't get it away. Still inside the penalty area. Here is Berghaus, right-hand side of the box. Has Lundstrom for company. Berghaus crosses the ball, looking for the space on that far side. It's cleared away by Rangers. Tillman is beaten to it by Bassi and there's a huge cheer from the Johan Cruyff Arena for the former Rangers man. As he has it now on the right-hand side. Plays it back once more as Ajax very calmly, very coolly, leading by a goal to nil, very happy to go all the way back to their own half and timber. That sums up. Bassi's now decided to end in the act. He's playing in the right wing. Uh, but again, they get to the byline with such ease, don't they? It's one of the hardest things to do in football, apart from go scoring goals, is get to the byline and get crosses in. But the amount of times that they've already done so in this first half, particularly the right-hand side, is very impressive. It's almost Manchester City-esque. Still, just the 1-0 lead, though, for Ajax against Rangers here on 5 Live. They have it on the halfway line with Daly Blimp. Forward now to Mohamed Kourouz. And now in field to Bergwijn, another with a bit of a point to prove after frustrating spell at Tottenham, of course such quality to try and edge out in the starting lineup there as Ajax come into the penalty area, oh they're playing it nicely, that's a really poor ball across, there was a suspicion of offside but the flag stayed down and if only Wrench had been able to pick out a teammate that would have been 2-0 Ajax Honestly, can you actually watch that without saying the phrase knife through butter? Because it's exactly what it looks like. I mean, lovely one to his third man runs. And it's just that final pass there. But I'm still looking at going, that is a thing of absolute beauty. And, you know, to the listener, if you're listening, do you know when Arsenal play at their very, very best, they pass and they move, and there's one, twos, and everyone seems to understand what everyone else is doing. I mean, it's classic like that type. I mean, there's, there's a link between all these teams, like City and Arsenal and Ajax. And to be fair, Rangers are finding this very, very tough indeed. They need to hang on, somehow get to half-time without losing another goal. They are in possession, just outside their own penalty area. Now the ball now on the left-hand side, Tillman under pressure, challenged by Ajax's goal scorer Edson Alvarez. Now the assistant on that far side, not too sure which way it should go. It is a free kick to Rangers and they get things moving quickly. Here is Lundstrom, just outside his own penalty area. We'll square it now to Tavernier, closed down immediately by two red and white shirts. Nice little interchange though with Kamara, but then the ball was a little short from Tavernier and Ajax have picked it up and it's slid into the penalty area by Tadic. That's an excellent interception, cover and challenge by Sands. And Tillman will play the ball forward, wrong decision, Kent had checked his run. It's wasted, it's through to the Ajax goalkeeper, Pasveer. But what about that for a sliding interception from Sands there? Yeah, uh, to be fair, it's good defending and there have been five or six pieces of great individual defending by Rangers players. But see when you have to last ditch tackle every single time, that's not a good sign. And that's not what the manager wants to see. Yes, they applaud these players for the effort and there's no lack of effort there but those Rangers defenders. But every single time that, you know, not every single time but close to it, the Ajax attack is needing something brilliant and something last ditch to stop Ajax getting through one and one with McLaughlin who's made a good save himself at his near post as well to keep it to just 1-0. As Ajax build once more down the right-hand side. And we have to say as well, it's a warm evening here in Amsterdam. Not conditions that we've seen at the 
height of the heat wave in terms of having to deal with it, but staying switched on, mentally focused in an atmosphere that's not just about the temperature, but about the noise that these Ajax fans will make. All a challenge for Rangers. The trail by Goldtonil here on Five Live, and they've lost possession outside their own penalty area. Here is Daly Blint, pulls it back. The shot is urged from Tadic, who eventually does shoot straight into Barisic. Spins out for an Ajax throw. The pressure from the Dutch champions is relentless. Such a high press there, isn't it? They get the ball back. Rangers are, you know, they're only about 20 yards out. They've lost the ball. There's two or three players out of the play. They cannot get a hold of the ball in midfield. There's not one player that's been able to do it. They've, they've tried. They've tried to hold on, but any time a player takes more than two touches, there's three red and white shots all over them, and they just can't build anything. Ball is all the way back with the Ajax keeper, pass fear, and as we look up to that grouping of Rangers fans, the blue shirts up high in the stands to our left, the arms are folded. Faces are tense and Ajax are coming forward once more. Ball into the area, just too much on it for Kudus. He doesn't even bother jumping on the edge of the six yard box because the ball was too high, but he does give the thumbs up for the effort. And McLaughlin will send this forward for Rangers. We're just uh, watching Barisic on the far side there. And the ball has come down his line side again. It was, it was an overlap on again. And he's got his arms out waiting. Any chance of some help here, please? And it's imperative that when he's deep line midfield goes and helps him by the way Rangers giving the ball away again there in the midfield there it's just constant isn't it it's constant and they're coming forward once more Ajax oh deflection and in 2-0 to Rangers 2-0 to Ajax I should say Berghaus with the effort that took the deflection and Rangers simply cannot stem the tide of the Dutch champions James Sands there in frustration tosses the ball up towards the halfway line and frustration at the moment is the word that sums this up for Rangers. Their return to the top table of European football is not going as planned because Ajax quite simply have been too much for them this evening. The effort from Berghaus, the deflection in is cruel. It takes it past McLaughlin from Sands and it's 2-0 to Ajax. Well, I was talking before about those last ditch tackles. Well, they're having to put that last ditch tackle in there, but it's just deflected off Sands and gone in. He's a bit unlucky there. In the end, if you've got a team that's attacking you constantly, getting through, particularly on that right-hand side, time and time and time and time again, eventually the dike is going to bust. And it has bust there. At this point in time, Rangers are being so outclassed you do kind of worry. Another goal before half time, and it would get very, very concerning for uh, the Rangers fans there, the Rangers manager, and indeed every player on that pitch. I actually is in possession, leading by two goals to nil. Well, Rangers will know that this Champions League group stage, it is a tough group, Group A. Ibrox, they will hope, will give them. We, we couldn't get the buzz out, could we? You know, the, the fact that, you know, they're getting so many chances every time they attack. Rangers don't seem to be doing anything about it. They're being outclassed everywhere. Rangers' best player there is Tavernier generally most weeks. He was shrugged off the ball as if he didn't exist by Kudus. I mean, it's a great finish. Left foot from an angle, lashed into the far corner. But Tavernier's got a good deal of time to get back to him there can't get even close to him, not strong enough, not quick enough. Three now, and at the moment, it's painful for a Scotsman to see it, but they are seriously outclassed at the moment, Rangers. Seriously outclassed. As you say, it's an outstanding finish from the man who is making his first start of the season for Ajax, Mohamed Kudus, but scored in their last match against Cambour. He's already surpassed his tally from last season. And he's certainly justifying his manager's faith, but 
What does the Rangers manager, Giovanni von Bronckhorst, do here? Ajax leading by three goals to nil. Rangers win a throw midway through their own half. Well, How do they Gio stop this time? Well, I don't know about Giovanni, you asked the correct question. What do you do now? Well, you try and stop the flow at some point. Do you change the system? Do you try and go to five at the back? Just get numbers back in there. Because the gaps are gigantic between the centre-backs and the full-backs just now. So you need to do something else about it. The most common thing to do is go like, you know, three at the back, two full-backs or wing-backs, get them to close in a little bit higher. And, you know, just play in the absolute break. I don't know if it'll work. You've got to do something. You've got to do something other than what's happening just now. And I don't think Giovanni Van Brock has, but I'm already looking at the substitutes that Rangers have got just now to see how he can change it. Ten minutes to go until half time. Plenty of thinking to do for Van Bronckhorst as Rangers almost give the ball away again and Lundstrom can't keep hold of it. He was played into trouble. Bergvine plays it into the penalty area. Tavernier just does enough to get his body in the way. Brings it out of the box and clears up towards halfway. It's good play from the Rangers captain. But it's all Ajax once again. The former Rangers man Calvin Bassi picks it up. And Edson Alvarez who got things underway for Ajax will pick it up just inside his own half and now Kenneth Taylor on the halfway line rolls it along to Yuri and Timber and forwards with a little interchange of passes with Berghaus but Ajax the comfort with which they can sit in they can camp in the Rangers half they can pick up the tempo around watch, the penalty yeah, area just watching just now Vicky on the far right hand side well you know Rangers have got a massive problem there is an out ball on every single time. Ryan Kent's coming much too close to Bassey, trying to close him high up. Now there is a gigantic space over, a half a pitch spare on the right hand side if Ajax can get it over there. They, they can't allow themselves to be that open, Rangers. Daily Blint is flagged offside, and Rangers will have a free kick. Rangers who trail here on Five Live by three goals to nil as Goldson sends it back to McLaughlin. Works it out to the left-hand side of the penalty area and Sands, whose deflection was unlucky for the second goal, but you can't say this is an unlucky scoreline for Rangers because Ajax, on balance, even though he played just 36 minutes, have been worth the three goals. But what can Ryan Kent do here? Ball over the top. He is marshaled away from the penalty area by Wrench, and then the tackle comes in. It will spin out off the boot of Alvarez for a Rangers throw, level with the Ajax penalty area, left-hand side. You know, I'm, I'm, I know a few Rangers fans will be listening in just now and it's painful to listen. And I'm saying, you've got to get back three in there and they're probably shouting at the radio. What do you mean back three? We've not got another centre half. They're all injured just now. And that's a very fair point, but maybe you've got to look at your midfield and be at Lindstrom or be at Kamara and say, look, you've got to drop in there and do that sort of job. Or maybe get a full back to drop in as a third centre back. You need to think along those lines, maybe. Goldson plays it forwards, but Bassi will get there ahead of Wright. And Shepard the ball out for a goal kick. It's been Davis back on the bench after injury, but is this the sort of match you want to throw him in for? He's certainly going to get tested. We presume that his fitness condition is allowing him to be on the substitute's bench. But It's a good question, but oddly enough, it's a strange thing. It's that bit easier if you're a back three. You know, if you're two centre-backs, you're going to be doing a lot of running, you're going to be stretched, etc. If you're back three, you get yourself tight. And, you know, as, as long as you can actually move and you're not actually still injured, which you shouldn't be if he's on the bench, that makes a little bit of sense. He'd maybe take a chance and, and get him on the field. IX3, Rangers nil here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Seven minutes to go until half-time here in Amsterdam. And... Ajax knocking the ball around outside their own penalty area. Now play it all the way back to goalkeeper Pasvir, who is closed down by Cholak, who really hasn't had a sniff so far for Rangers. As Ajax come once more down the right-hand side. Lundström is back across there, defending for Rangers. Ajax will pick it up and continue to drive. Lundström gets a foot in, but Ajax will play it. Look at the space here for Yuri and Timber inside the penalty area making a run forward from center half that's the problem the rangers have to deal with as they clear the ball out of their penalty area 
just never know who's going to pop up there as Bergvine has it on the left. Very much the Ajax way, isn't it? You know, you just go and find out where the weakness is, find out where there's a gap, and just overload it time and again. It doesn't matter if you're your full back or your centre back or anyone. Just do it, get into the space. They have got that adaptability. And they have the ball over on the right-hand side once more. Berghaus is making a dangerous run, but he's strayed offside. So Alex will keep it over on that far side. Here is Alvarez. Exchanges passes, gets it back on the halfway line. Ajax, who have a 100% record so far in the league this season. The reigning Dutch champions looking to go deep into the Champions League once more, as they did against Tottenham back in 2019, falling at the semi-final stage as they come forward once more, leading by three goals to nil, as the shot is driven in, saved by McLaughlin, will come out to Tadic, who dinks the ball back across, should be cleared by Tavernier and is, prevents the corner as well, it's out for an Ajax throw, and they are still knocking on the door, the latest, Kenneth Taylor, to try his luck, good save by McLaughlin. Do you know there's a decent argument, the Rangers are 3-0 down here, and their best player so far has been their goalkeeper, I mean he's made a number of very, very good saves, and He's, you know, he's coming through, shots are coming through, a whole bunch of players there. Rangers, to be fair, they're, they're trying really hard to squeeze up when they can. They're trying to be as positive as they can. The thing is, their press is not good enough. You know, because if you're against good technical defenders, if you don't press right, you'll just get passed around and yet you've got four players out to play. That happened to them just a moment ago and it's... I know why they're trying to do it and it's well done them trying to do that, but do you know what? If you try and press high and you get beaten in the press, you're absolutely stuffed. Tavernier's throw forward is cut out once more by Ajax. And Timber will square it. Now to Berghaus, he's popped up at centre half. Why not? <laughs> Ajax 3, Rangers 0 here on 5 Live. Back heel from Alvarez isn't reached by its intended target, and Rangers will come forward. But again, this is what happens as the ball from right goes all the way through to pass via. It's nice. Pass one, pass two, pass three, but then the ball over the top, when they've got the outlet of Kent that they're aiming for, or right on the right-hand side, Trollock through the middle, it's just that final ball. It, it's not even that it doesn't just reach them, it's, it's just completely the wrong call or execution. And the reason for it is very, very simple. The closing down. So when you're, when you're playing that important pass, they've got two or three players that are off balance, they've got only got seconds to try and play it. So a lot of it, you say, maybe not the best play from Rangers. In actual fact, it's a brilliant play by Ajax. Yeah, it's been a stellar performance so far for the Dutch champions as they come down the left-hand side once more. Here is Berghaus, lays it off to Daly Blint, and now Bassi, who's decided to join the attack. Taylor, as Ajax send it back to the centre circle, and Alvarez, who is the deepest man apart from goalkeeper Remco Pasvier, out to the left-hand side once more. And Bassi as Rangers trying to stay in position, trying to stop this getting worse than 3 0 with two and a half minutes to go until half time here on Five Livers. They do get the footing, clear the ball away, but there's no blue shirt anywhere near the Ajax penalty area, and it's an easy task for Remco Pasvia, the 38 year old, to come out and clear the ball away. So Ajax still down the left hand side now with Blint. Field to Berg, fine. Little one two with Blint. Taylor's ahead of him. Here is Taylor. Lovely back heel to find Blint. Squares it in fields. And the challenge coming in from Tillman. Allowed to go by our referee, Tobias Styler. Ajax still in possession with Taylor. Plays the ball into the penalty area. Here is Bergvine. His effort is blocked and the second shot is beaten away by McLaughlin from Tadic. Out for an Ajax throw. And it generally ends up most attacks with either a, a pass that nearly gets through or a shot that has to be saved by the keeper or indeed a goal. And, and going forward they, they have been a bit selfless with each other as well. There's good technical players out there, they're good strength, their attitude has been brilliant. They've maybe took the foot off a little bit for the fast fi past five or ten minutes uh, Ajax, but that's not to see. It's, it's easy to play against. It's still hard for Rangers to play against. Here is Alvarez, receives it back from Berghaus. Again, the space is there on the right-hand side. Barisic really coming in. Now he'll have to go out because they have used that outlet on the right. And again, it's just too easy for Ajax as Wrench picks it up on the overlap. Spun back once more to Tadic and now Timber. Tadic will receive the ball again and plays it out to the right-hand side now. Rangers 
camped inside their own penalty area, trying to keep it at 3-0 as we approach half-time here on Five Live as Timber slides the ball through. Looking for Alvarez, plays it out to the right-hand side and Taylor. Now Berghaus will pick it up on the right. Kamara gets the foot in, will he prevent the corner? Ajax trying to make sure that he doesn't and Tadic does well there. It will be a corner to Ajax and Rangers have to stay switched on here. You have to, you know, you only get seconds until we see the board for how many extra minutes are going to be put on. You do not want to go and have a not chance for another corner and go 4-0 down. So it's imperative to get this one clear. Corner swung in from the right-hand side and McLaughlin comes and gathers at the second attempt. He did well there, McLaughlin. He commanded the situation, took a couple of attempts to grab it, but as we enter one minute of added time, his presence was enough and Rangers can try and build something from the back, trailing by three goals to nil here on Five Line. Yeah, I remember the Rangers fans and Rangers manager will be looking and thinking about, OK, what do we do here? Do you try and get back in the game? Because that's the big call. When you're getting well beaten, the three goals down, it's half time. And remember, Rangers are not used to this. You know, they get beat 4-0 against Celtic at the weekend, but they usually, they're used to dominating games and it's a hard one to take when you're not used to that sort of thing. But do you try and go and attack it, or do you say, OK, we've actually got four attack-minded players out there. Maybe we shouldn't have. Maybe we should be a little bit cuter, a little bit more sensible, and we'll see if that's what Gio does in the second half. Well, they're in possession on the halfway line. They've lost it, though. Aberdeen away coming up on Saturday, sitting just three points behind Rangers. And we have to say as well, you know, it's such early stages in this Champions League group stage as the half-time whistle goes, but it is not the start that Rangers would have wanted on their return to the top table of European football. They trail by three goals to nil at half-time, and you have to say it's utterly deserved from the Dutch champions, Ajax. Alvarez, Berghaus with a cruel deflection off Sands, and Kudus with the goals. Rangers need to find a way to stem the tide from the home side. At the moment, it's looking like a tall task. Half time at the Johan Cruyff Arena, IX3, Rangers nil. Welcome back to the Champions League, hey Pat? Oh yes, uh, a little bit of a lesson handed out there. I mean, first of all, you, you, I mean, I love good football, so well done Ajax. They, they are a, a really beautiful team to watch. They play it well, their attitudes are great. It's a good, not just the technical side of it, not just the fact that they have got total football going on there. The fact that they're all working hard for each other and lose the ball, they fight and battle and you know, it's not, it's not beneath them to go and tackle and get close, right? But you're playing against that and you're being outclassed, you've got to do something about it. And uh, the Celtic losing 3 0 last night, and you know, 3 0 obviously at half time for, for Rangers just now, yeah, it's a hard one to get back in. But you know, Ajax, Real Madrid, they've been in this competition for quite a few years. It may well be that uh, the Scottish teams and maybe particularly Rangers have got quite a lot to learn. And we shall see if uh, Van Broekers can do anything in the second half. Look, he's got three attack minded players out there Kent, Tillman, Wright. The Cholak in front of them. That, that's 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 brave, bordering on being mm. naive. I think he needs to get a little bit mu more muscle in there and make sure this does, doesn't turn into a, a so, riot of goals. So, so does he have to be pragmatic to make sure that it isn't five or six? And in some ways, it's it's settling for three nil. Thanks very much for getting the word. I was searching for their pachafas. Yeah, <laughs> pragmatic's the word. Um, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. That's what you got to be. Um, and if, the, the chances of when you've been beaten that well in the, f the first half, you've hardly got a kick. I, I don't know if it's 75%, something like that, possession against. The chances that have been created, do you really think you're going to come out in the second half and be really open and score four goals and change everything? It, it's kind of so unlikely as to be naive. Now, now and again, once in a lifetime, we're talking about Spurs before here, these weird things can happen, you know, but it would be, I suspect, suspect, more sensible if you get a little bit more sensible defending, hard-working midfielders in that area, maybe try and get to a back three as well, and then play in the break now and again, maybe get the other corner, and then go and attack that sort of thing, as it is so far. We just haven't had any of that. They've hardly been in the opposition, I was going to say 18 yard line, it's got to say half. Oh. Uh, the, the, the stats are, are brutal. I mean, I've not, I've not seen them, but I know. No, but I've got the only stat of the match is obviously 3 0, but 69% possession for Ajax, 11 goal attempts to Rangers, 1. Six of those on target, 
391 total passes compared to Rangers 126 and they've completed 360 of those of Ajax they've had 71 attacks 48 of which have been deemed dangerous attacks I mean, <laughs> I mean and they, have they are they are dominant yeah they are dominant and but also I think they are a very good team and that's the, the, the thing that's kind of frightening about Ajax isn't it you know, they, they, they sell players every year that are their top players and they make yeah. a lot of money. And you think, well, that's them gone now. And then they come back with a completely whole set of new ideas and new players. And, yeah. you know, and they're still great to watch. So you've got to applaud them as, you know, as a, f a football club and as an, an ethos. We were talking about ethos uh, before this game started. I mean, they have got that and they live by it. And we started the first minute of this game today. And I was saying to Vicky, I love sitting watching Ajax because they're so confusing to watch and you think right you're centre back oh no you're not you're right wing <laughs> where have you got? what are you doing where are you and you're kind of tracking it but that is total football that is the way and it, and it has been really quite educating to watch 3-0 to Ajax at half time second half on the way the other game in that group of course Napoli against Liverpool and we'll bring that to you at 8 o'clock the other early game this evening is the other two teams in Tottenham's group and that is goalless at half time between Eintracht Frankfurt and Sporting Lisbon at Tottenham play Marseille at 8 o'clock and we will have plenty of updates from there let's go to the US Open tennis Russell Fuller where Arena Sabalenka, who is the only one of last year's semi-finalists to have survived the first week at the US Open, is back into the last four. She has just beaten Karina Pliskova of the Czech Republic, 6-1, 7-6, 7-4 on the tiebreak. And this after a very difficult start to the year. She considered taking a break from the sport because her serve was proving so destructive. And she also said it was not easy at all being an athlete from Belarus as the war in Ukraine began. She will play world number one Iga Swiatek or Jessica Pegula in the semi-finals. The next match is the quarter-final between Andre Rublev and Francis TFO of the United States. That's live on Sports Extra. And a word for the wheelchair competition. Defeat through retirement and injury for Gordon Reed in the first round of the wheelchair singles against Martin de la Puente of Spain. He retired after losing the first set 6-2. And Britain's Lucy Schuka has lost 6-2, 6 love to the defending champion Dita de Groot in the women's competition. Uh, Sports Extra, if you want to listen to the tennis, we'll talk Thomas Tuchel sacking at Chelsea with John Murray after the latest BBC News. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. With the Five Live News, I'm Sophie Yardley. Liz Truss is continuing to appoint her junior ministers after becoming Prime Minister. She's taken part in her first PMQs, where she confirmed an announcement would be made tomorrow on plans to help people with rising energy bills. It's understood a typical gas and electricity bill could be limited to around £2,500. The Governor of the Bank of England says there's little he can do to stop the UK sliding into recession. Andrew Bailey told MPs that any economic downturn will be caused by Russia's actions and the impact of rising energy prices. Ryan Giggs says he's disappointed that he'll face a retrial on charges of assault and of controlling and coercive behaviour towards his ex-girlfriend. He denies the accusations. Last month, a jury was discharged after failing to reach a verdict. And a single UK ticket holders come forward to claim the £110 million pounds Euro Millions jackpot. It would make them wealthier than Harry Styles, according to the Sunday Times Rich List. 12 shortlisted albums, but only one can win the coveted Mercury Prize. Sam Fender, Wet Leg, Little Sims and other big names will compete for the prestigious Music Award. What an amazing array of music. Join Six Music live with interviews and the winning album played out in full. The winner of the Mercury Prize is... The Mercury Prize 2022. Thursday night from 7 on BBC Sounds. Uh, this is Five Live Sport on a Wednesday evening. Ajax 3, Rangers 0. We'll be back with Vicky and Pat shortly. Let's talk to our correspondent, uh, John Murray. He'll be watching Tottenham Marseille this evening, but he's here to talk Thomas Tuchel sacking at Chelsea. Didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> well... I mean, it's uh, it's the same it's old Chelsea. It's not a, criti it's not a criticism, no, by the way. Well, it's a general, in, we in didn't honesty, see that one coming. In all honesty, Mark, you know, doing this job for as long as we have, when Chelsea sack a manager, 
it's never it's never completely surprising because that's what they do and a new Chelsea is clearly the same as the old Chelsea and you know if you remember the Abramovich years Sackings came along regularly yet it didn't stem, stem the flow of the trophies and over the period that Abramovich was there 19 years they were the most successful club from these islands they won more trophies than anyone else despite I think it's 13 men including the, the couple of interims that were there as well who who held the manager's job over the period of time the, the thing about this is that I, I don't quite get is that that Todd Bowley and the new consortium have come in and, and as we know now, you know, this is their 100th day in charge since they officially took over. And the statement said that the new owners believe that this is the right time to make this transition. But this decision comes after they've spent, in terms of transfer fees, over a quarter of a billion pounds. So this is, you know, this is the biggest transfer summer window that we've ever seen in terms of spending. And Chelsea were the club that spent more money than anyone else. Player after player after player for big sums. And Thomas Tuchel has had seven matches this season in all competitions to, to try and meld that all together. And yes, OK, you know, some of the, the performances weren't good enough. I, I saw them well beaten at Leeds. They were disappointing at Everton in the first match of the season, even though they won that. And obviously they've lost to Southampton. Uh, we're, we're rather fortunate, as we know, against West Ham on Saturday. Lost to Zagreb last night. Um, he's had seven matches, though, to meld this all together. But I think it is one of the truisms of football that if you are a manager who's been point appointed by the previous owners, then you're very often on a sticky wicket. Uh, Lewis Gabriel is from Chelsea Fan TV. Evening, Lewis. Yeah, you're right, bro. Y yeah, I'm good, thank you. It was reported that they'd have made this decision, whatever happened last night against Dinamo Zagreb. So, do you think that if he'd won four nil last night, that he'd have still been sacked? I can't really tell you at this point because nobody expected to wake up and see this news in general. Like, you could say whether we won or lost, would you have expected Tuchel to be, sack to be sacked? I don't think anyone would have accept expected him to be sacked just seven games into the new season. And that's the most confusing thing for me because I get there's been a massive overhaul in the backroom staff at Chelsea since Bowley joined, but... That happened immediately after he joined. If Tuchel was never really the man for the job, then why would you spend 300 million on his targets? Why would you let him start the season? It would make a lot more sense to just sack him and bring in a new manager and then we completely start with this new regime. It's just confusing that we've done it now. They they seem to have worked, don't they? Thomas Tuchel and Todd Bowley, who's sort of your, your interim sporting director as well as owner. They, they seem to, or what we hear is that they work together on a lot of these players. So some may have been a sporting director's call, some may, but in conjunction with Thomas Tuchel. The last player you signed, I mean, was definitely in conjunction with Thomas Tuchel because mm. they kept talking about how they worked at Dortmund together. So a penny yeah. for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang's thoughts today. I don't know what he's thinking. Like, he literally said when he first joined, he came back to play for Tuchel. He's had 45 minutes and he's already been sacked. So he's probably just as confused as everybody else. I don't think any of the players, any of the fans, anybody expected to be in this situation when we woke up. It makes no sense at all. Would you say, would you say that he's cut a frustrated figure at times, though, Tuchel? I mean... It, it, he's look and, and by the way, I don't think there's any surprise if he has cut a frustrated figure, given his calendar year. Mm. And I completely agree on that. Like we talk about behind the scenes, we've dealt with the club going bank, potentially going bankrupt, Roman sanctions. Tuchel's gone through a divorce as well. Also, we are in the middle of a transition. Like there's meant to be a massive squad overhaul as we try to create the squad that's the most suited to Tuchel's style of play. And we've just sacked him in the middle of all of that. I get the frustrations from him because I always go back to Jurgen Klopp, for example. He needed three years to make a team that he thought was capable of contending for the biggest trophies in Europe with Liverpool. And we've sacked Tuchel like a year and a half into that. Klopp had a completely different squad to the one he won the Champions League with. Tuchel would have wanted a completely different squad too. If we didn't want to back Tuchel, we should have just got rid of him. But we decided to do it now, which makes me think it's a decision that was only made recently. In spite of everything else that we might be hearing about how um, 
this might have been in the plans for weeks or so. It doesn't make sense because then why wouldn't you sack them at, th at that point? It all just seems very rushed for me and I don't really understand it. John Murray, they're, they're being heavily linked with Graham Potter. Mm. And Brighton have had a very, very good start to the season. So if this has been planned for ages, do you think it's irrelevant, the, season, the start to the season that Brighton have had? Because presumably, they'd have been going for Graham Potter anyhow. Well, this is a, is a huge decision from, uh, for Graham Potter to have to take. If indeed, you know, and, and we are reporting that, uh, that there will be talks and that Graham Potter will speak to Chelsea. Now, that's a, a huge step up to take charge of a Champions League club from the position that he's been in. Um, you know, his, uh, he's got a very clear career path to this point. Graham Potter, you know, as, as we know, working in Sweden, his academic background before that, then getting the job at Swansea, then at Brighton. And I think one of the most significant things about his tenure at Brighton is that he's been there for over three and a half years. You know, they haven't suddenly got to this position under Graham Potter. Yeah. This is this is a this is a club working together and all pointing in the right direction, you know, and having a 15th place finish and a 16th place finish and then a ninth place finish last season. You know, that there is patience involved in that. But if Graham Potter wants to reach the very top of the game, then you have to take the step sometime. And I think it would be very, very difficult. You know, whatever we say about Chelsea and how long they stick with managers, this would be a very difficult one for him to, to say no to. Uh, Lewis, who do you want? Or out of Pochettino or Potter? Well, if it's down to those two, yeah. You, oh, could throw someone out. you could throw someone else in if you want. I mean, like, this is all very new to all of us, but I would have gone for Graham Potter as well. I think he's been well overdue a move to a big six club. I think he's ready for the move too. And I think it would also help us in terms of going forward, being able to finally break down low blocks which Chelsea have struggled with for years. I think it would be a good move for us. And plus, like, I also believe he's a sort of manager that doesn't need flashy names or anything. We'd make much more smarter signings, which is more in line of what Bowley would want too. And when you look at it compared to the likes of Pochettino, Pochettino's coming with the history at Tottenham. So I don't believe going straight from an emotional breakup of sorts with Thomas Tuchel, bringing an ex-Tottenham manager into the fold is only going to make things even more toxic. So I'd go for Potter. Thank you very much, Lewis Gebrselassi from Chelsea Fan TV. John Murray as well, who's at Tottenham Marseille for us this evening. Our second commentary comes from Italy, where it is Napoli against Liverpool. Uh, but now let's return to Amsterdam. Will Rangers find this second 45 as punishing as the first? Ajax are three goals to the good. Here are Pat Nevin and Vicky Sparks. Thanks, Mark. Rangers trailing by three goals to nil as we are underway in the second half. Have made two changes at half time. Off go captain Tavernier. And right on come 18-year-old Leon King for his European debut. And Ravi Matonda, who arrived this summer from Schalke, the Wales international. So, Pat Nevin, we were wondering how Rangers would approach this game in the second half. And Giovanni van Bronckhorst has given his answer. Yeah, uh, he had to make a few changes there. And just looking closely, I suggested a back five. They're a back five, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> that's what they've done. One. Uh, they, could, they could not do that. So th that makes absolute sense to me. They've brought on uh, Jack, who's going to be you know, a defensive player, who's going to help them a little bit as well. So you've got King, Matondo and Jack all on just now. And uh, Jack is a player who will sit in that midfield area and he'll make a couple of tackles. And, and that's important that you may get somebody to make some tackles because there weren't that many tackles beforehand. And uh, the other player, obviously, I'm trying to look and see who actually came off there. It was Tillman, wasn't it? Yeah, Tillman's gone as well. So three changes for Rangers at the break. Good spot. Jack's sneaking on as well. Two more changes they can make in this second half. Rangers, you get five in the Champions League. But three changes at the break. And we will take you through the lineups in a moment. But Rangers in position, trailing by three goals to nil. Ryan Kent coming forward, picking up the ball on that right-hand side. Charlotte's made a good run through the centre in a bit of space, but Kent just couldn't release the ball in time. He's trying to win it back off Kenneth Taylor, but can't do so. And Bassi, the former Rangers man, sends it all the way back to Pasveer. So no changes for Ajax at half-time. They have Pasveer in goal. The back four of Wrench, Timber, Bassi and Blint. Ahead of them, it's Tadic, Alvarez and Taylor with Berghaus, Bergvine and Kudos. 
up front. Let's head to our second commentary of the evening and get the team news. Napoli against Liverpool, Ian Dennis. Thiago is on the bench for Liverpool, as is Arta, but Jurgen Klopp makes three changes, and that is Robertson at left-back for Simicast, Milner into the midfield for Carvalho, and Firmino starts instead of Nunes. As for Napoli, they make two changes, Oliveira and Politano both start. Thanks, Ian. Commentary from 8 o'clock here on 5 Live as Ryan Jack wins that ball just outside his own penalty area. And Matondo will pick it up over on that right-hand side for Rangers. It's forward now from Jack once more. This is much better from Rangers at the start of the second half. Here is Matondo. He's dispossessed by Daly Blint, but that is a judge to have been a foul in the end by Ajax, and that will be a free kick to Rangers over on the far side. I think it's almost every single thing I was calling for him to do with Gio Van, Giovanni Van Broca's half-time he's done. You need a back three. You see, maybe one of the centre midfielders, Lindstrom's gone in uh, to that back three alongside Golson and Sands. Barisic is the left wing back, stroke full back. Leon King will be the right wing back, stroke full back. Um, and then that just gives you a little chance to break, get the ball up to Kolak, Cholak, and then you've got Matondo and with the pace that he's got, will go and give a little bit of support. So it, it seems a more, a more sensible you know, way to set up a team against Ajax, who are playing extremely well. And that is why Ajax lead by three goals to nil, but Rangers with this free kick swung into the penalty area. Sands was up there and he did win the header. But it's wide on the edge of the six-yard box. He was well pressured. But again, this is much better intent from Rangers at the start of the second half. I see, what we're saying is if Rangers are physically a strong side. So if you go, you know, even though they've, they've lost a goal from a corner and could have lost the second one, they've got players that can really go and attack it from those areas. Now, that wasn't a corner, it was a free kick, but they almost got a free header at the back post. So that's something they need to try their very best to adapt to. But I mean, looking at it just now, that's a very, very clear 5-3-2 the Rangers are playing just now. Um, and, that, you know, and I suspect the players will feel more comfortable with that because they'll not be ripped apart like they were in the first half. Oh, they might do, but it'll be harder to do it because there's less space in the back. Yes, and when they're defending, it drops into this 5-4-1 as well as Ajax spread it out to the right-hand side and Tadic, good play. Looking for Wrench, who just about keeps it in, but it should be. Cleared away by Goldson, who plays it out to Barisic. The throw goes the way of Ajax and Rangers are not happy about that at all. Barisic felt that Tadic played that out of play without getting a nick off the Rangers man. But it is an Ajax throw deep in Rangers territory. Ajax, the Dutch champions, who lead by three goals to nil as Berghauser's shot is charged down. So Rangers, yes, with this back five now. The clock clean in goal, the back five with Barisic, Sands. Lundstrom, who's dropped back in there, Goldson and King, the 18-year-old, who's come on at half-time. Ahead of them, you have Kamara and Jack sitting in the centre of midfield, Kent and Matondo on the wings, and Cholak leading the line up front as Ajax come forward once more. Berghaus, loose ball, cleared away, straight into Tadic by Rangers, though. Barisic takes charge and plays it all the way back to McLaughlin, who was closed down by Kudos, who scored that absolutely spectacular third goal for Ajax in the first half left hand drive arrowing a cross goal in off the post it was sublime and Ajax are coming forward once more again Rangers winning the ball just on the edge of their own penalty area Bergwijn sliding will keep it in big roars for the man in form who hasn't got on the score sheet himself this evening but certainly he's playing his part the former Tottenham man as Ajax pick up possession midway through the Rangers half out to the right hand side now and wrench Berghaus is changing passes and Berghaus was fouled there by James Sands and it will be a free kick to Ajax midway through the Rangers half right hand side 3-0 the Dutch side still lead I think Sands actually will be quite pleased with that you know it's, it's a very very tough strong tackle that he's put in there he's not going to get a yellow card for it but um, it's almost a you know, put on a calling card to say, right, we're not going to be a walkover in this second half. You're going to have to work to get through us this time. Didn't have to work too hard the first half. I to have the ball over on the left-hand side. A yellow card just floated down from the stands there. Is that thrown by a fan? Is, is that how you express that you should see an opponent booked in this match? I don't think the referee saw it. Tobias Styler won't have done much good if he did, I'm sure. It was just the free kick for Ajax, and they've sent it all the way back to their goalkeeper, Remco Kasper, leading by three goals to nil. No, it's going be not as easy, is it, for Ajax just now? You know, we're zipping through that Rangers line with big, big gaps. 
And now they're trying to play those passes through that back lane and through that deeper midfield with Jack sitting there really quite deep alongside Kamara. And they're running in traffic a lot bit more. It's still going to be tough for Rangers. And you suspect they're not going to get a lot of ball up in the other half. But he couldn't leave it that easy for Ajax for another half of football. Jack wins the ball midway through the Rangers half. Kamara gets a foot on it, but it's all the way through to Bassi on the halfway line. Ajax 3, Rangers nil. here on 5 Live. Is it something he could have changed in the first half, Pat? Or is actually a formation change something that you want to do at half time just to make sure that everybody knows exactly where they should be? Because they are putting square pegs in round holes at the moment because of the injured centre halves. That I have think out. that is the most important question that you could possibly ask about the entire evening. After 10, 15 minutes, it was clear. You know, and the top managers, you know, the ones that have been there for a long time, the Mourinho's and all that, they'll do it. And if it means pulling one of your players off after 20 minutes, they'll do it. Because the team is much more important. Van Broncos stuck with it there, but I agree with you. Far too long. 45 minutes was too long. Hey, if I can see it, surely everyone else could see it there. That they were in serious trouble with the way they, the way they were playing and the personnel was on the field. Whereas now, looks a bit a little bit better anyway Ajax are driving forward though again but again they run into that blue wall of shirts out to the left hand side come Rangers Ryan Kent in possession little tug back there from Tadic referee lets it go and now here is Jack in field to Kent back now to Barisic but Rangers it's just it just looks so much better there is so much more composure Ajax are having to work harder because easy, easy was the way to sum up that first half for Ajax and that's why they lead 3-0 as Rangers have it on halfway. A piece of cake and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the manager maybe puts his hands up after the game and says, look, tactically I got that wrong. He's come back to Ajax, he's come back to Holland and he wants the Netherlands and he wants to show people, look, I've got a good team here. I want to play wide open football. I want to play a wee bit of total football myself. They've not got what it takes to do that and well, well done him. And uh, thanks, Chappers, they've got their pragmatism back which they needed. And well done to Ryan Kent there, winning a free kick for Rangers. Third of the way inside the Ajax half. Still trailing Rangers by three goals to nil. But as you say, Pat, of course, Van Bronckhorst, such a Dutch legend, the former Netherlands captain, and certainly not appreciated for his club exploits here, though. The former Feyenoord player and manager, huge rivals, of course, of Ajax. So. Again, so many emotions swirling around. The very calm Dutchman, as it usually is, although you have to say he wasn't calm at full time against PSV Eindhoven, was he? When Rangers came through the Champions League playoffs to reach this group stage for the first time in 12 years. 3 0 they trail. Free kick goes swung into the penalty area, headed on, and it's easy for Pasveer, and the referee spotted an infringement anyway, so it will be a free kick to Ajax inside their own area. And Edson Alvarez there. It's right on the edge of the penalty area. He's just been ushered inside the box, back inside the box by the referee. He's not happy. He's gone down. He's rubbing the right-hand side of his neck. And that was interesting there to see the referee almost like a teammate just calming Alvarez down there because he's claiming that he perhaps could have had a penalty. Goldson certainly, on watching the replay, Pat, he's, he's got his arms all over him. Yeah, um, I'm not giving Alvarez any sympathy there. I'm sorry. I think he started it. So he starts it. And then he moans when someone actually gives a little bit of drive back to him and pretends he's cricked his neck really badly. I'm not giving him that. I'm harsh, aren't I? Well, <laughs> no, harsh. Hold it well, I think I can certainly see your perspective. Alvarez, who got things underway for Ajax in this Champions League Group A match and Ajax in possession now. You have to say, I was on Radio 5 Live the other morning and I think called them my opinion saying that if any player pretends to have a head injury, and it's proved that it hasn't, he should be sent off and have a three-match ban. So I can't really stop saying that when I'm doing the commentary. Neck injury count in that? Part of extension uh, of the it, head? To be fair, he didn't roll about. <laughs> no, he didn't. The, the, he what didn't. I hear is when a player pretends to be a head injury and you go, go and see it in the replay and he's not been touched, I mean, I think that's dangerous. Not only offensive, but also dangerous as well. It wasn't quite that bad. It I'll wasn't. give him that. Rangers with the ball back inside their own penalty area. Over on the right hand side, now play back into McLaughlin. All in orange this evening. And out to Barisic now on the left hand side. Cleared forward by Sands. Out of play. 
and Ajax just showing a hint of that press that they employed so well in the first half that has led to this three goal advantage yeah. for the Dutch side. It's not quite as easy though, is it? Because Rangers have got those five players to play with. They've played with to McLaughlin as well there, who, let's be fair, there's a few Rangers supporters who's, you know, hearts are in their mouth at that point in time after what happened against uh, Celtic at the weekend, but he actually was very, very calm in the ball there. Lovely ball from Alvarez out to the left-hand side, defending here for Rangers to do as the ball is played into Kudus on the edge of the area. And now Berghaus looks it back to Daly Blint, midway through the Rangers half, and now out to the left-hand side once more to Taylor. Ajax 3, Rangers 0, here on BBC Radio 5 Live. 12 minutes gone in this second half in the Champions League. Timberdown in the centre circle, squares it to Bassi, the former Rangers man, and now Daly Blintz once more out to the left-hand side. And Taylor, well marshalled though, this back five of Rangers that they've switched to in the second half is just managing to stop the fluidity of the Ajax attacks, although they're always threatening. And they get near the penalty area, the movement, the combinations, as Rangers had a free kick there. Barisic going down, nothing doing, but Sands has cleared the ball away anyway. Got a little nick on the way through. Mara will pick it up and help it on. Ajax pick it up once more though. Here is Timber, right hand side, leading by three goals to nil on Five Live. Remember you can watch with the final score graphics and Vidi Printer this evening. Just go to the BBC iPlayer or the BBC Sport app and click on Five Live Final Score. We of course will keep you right up to date with Tottenham's match against Marseille along with our commentary of Napoli against Liverpool. Second match in Rangers group tonight. Starting at 8 o'clock with Ian Dennis and Jonathan Woodgate as Ajax fans rather than players appeal for a free kick outside the Rangers penalty area. Not given. Lundstrom charging out of defence, plays it forward, won back by Ajax. And the ball will be played back to Alvarez, who often, as the defensive midfielder, will sit deep as the deepest output player for Ajax and just dictate the tempo once again, start those passing moves which Berghaus is now continuing. Yeah, we're talking at half time and what the Rangers do, did they just try and you know soak up a lot of that pressure, you know, defend a lot more, bring on the players we suggested to do and play in this system and just accept a 3-0 defeat and you might sneak one back and it's a kind of almost a you never know kind of attitude. That's exactly what they've done and it's and it's against a lot of what people think and what I feel we should do when you play football. But actually it's naivety if you don't do that. And to be honest, those players in blue, they're enjoying themselves a lot more just now because they can actually pass it to each other now and again, whereas in the first half, they couldn't even get two or three passes strung together. Here come Ajax though, down the left-hand side, ball into the area, cleared away by Sands, Barisic is right there as well, and they're looking at each other there, the two of them now just moving away. Sands did his job, it's out for the corner, but you don't want to see those hints of potential confusion there in the Rangers' defence, particularly not when they've yeah, got well, another Barry, set can see it all, he's got to call loud enough, but then again, it's quite a noisy crowd behind him now. That is true, Pack stands here in the Johan Cruyff Arena. As Ajax take the corner short, here is Taylor, swings it in low, it's a poor delivery, it's headed away by Rangers, Tadic though, the Ajax captain will win it back, he slips. Mara gets a foot in and Rangers should be able to play their way out of trouble as Ryan Jack does very well under pressure. Matondo's lost it though and Ajax come forward down the right hand side. Here is Tadic, Matondo trying to get back, has to be careful that he doesn't foul Tadic. He doesn't, lovely back heel by Berghaus. Tadic now, right hand side of the penalty area, lifts the ball in. Nobody's there for Ajax and it's kneed back by John Lundstrom. Looked as though it might be going out for a corner, but McLaughlin raced across and prevented the set piece. And Lundstrom will play the ball out. He's got lucky there. He played it straight into Kenneth Taylor, but the ball came back to Lundstrom and he can set Kamara away over the halfway line. Ajax 3, Rangers 0. Here on 5 Live, 61 minutes played in this Group A Champions League match. As Ajax have a player down, it's Tadic tangling with Ryan Jack, who has certainly made a difference since coming on but he is the first player to go into the book this evening i don't think he's going to complain too much about that one just straight leg tackle i think it's just at the last millisecond he's trying to take himself out so he's not trying to injure the player but when you go to ground like that and your two feet are kind of almost in the air referees are going to give a yellow card there every single time so, but it's, good, it's still good for rangers you know there's a real comfort about the team just now they're not getting many attacks 
Yeah, up front, um, Ajax don't actually have to push it, do they? And they're not really pushing it now. It's almost as if they're seeing out this game saying, right, OK, we may get the odd chance. But all those things that were happening in the first half, like particularly the overlap they were getting on the right-hand side, now that you've got an extra player in that defence, it's just much, much harder to do it. They've got through once, but you're talking 17 minutes into the second half. It looks like a different game of football, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think that's where you spot on Pat as Bassi brings it away for Ajax midway through his own half. There's no point for Rangers. Yeah. There's no point to playing with the system and the way that they did in the first half and conceding another three goals. Yes, you want to stick to your principles. Yes, Van Bronckhorst talked in the pre-match press conference about giving the players confidence and trust after the old firm derby defeat. But that doesn't mean in any sense that you can't change your tactics. Yeah. And that's what he's done as Ajax come forward once more. They're having to work harder in the second half because of that change made by Rangers at half-time. This is a play, play back on the, to the penalty area. Tadic takes it off his teammate Kudos. Now plays it out to the right-hand side, Berghaus. Plays the ball in, it's cleared away at the back by Liam King for Rangers. And picked up once more by Bassi, the former Rangers man. Lovely ball out to the left-hand side from Timber. Tim King did well to get a touch on it. The 18-year-old, it's out for an Ajax throw. Good, real good play there by Ajax. And the right-hand side again, now. they sort of one twos, tricks, skills, drag backs, etc. But then the ball comes into the blue shirts there. And the blue shirts are getting our way, and that's what they have to keep on doing. And this is... Again, we talked about concentration early in the game when Rangers didn't have it for long periods. We've seen that much better just now. But as they get tired, you need to keep that going. You don't want to lose another goal because they lost four in the weekend. Three is bad. We don't want to be any more than that. Very good play again there by Leon King, the 18-year-old, just stepping up out of defence, clearing the ball up towards halfway. Scotland internationals come through, youth international, I should say, come through the Rangers Academy. This is... Career European debut, and he will hope for many more special nights on this stage with his boyhood club. Rangers back in the Champions League group stage for the first time in 12 years, trailing by three goals to nil. But this is a much better performance in the second half as Ajax come forward once again with Bergvine. He stopped by Matondo outside the penalty area. Here is Kenneth Taylor. Plays it out to the left hand side, and the former Manchester United man, Daly Blint, and now Bassi. Square to Timber as Rangers drop deep in that back five. Berghaus keeps going. Kudos, oh, lovely skill, brilliant footwork. Kudos, this will be fantastic. Sliding challenge just puts him off from Barisic. And that is outstanding defending from the Rangers man. Matching some outstanding footwork from Mohamed Kudos. Ajax have it on the left-hand side. That would have been one of the great European goals of enough. Just for a moment there, that was going to, you looked as if it was going to be a goal that Messi would have been proud of. That's the, the type of dribble he had. Right? Actually, I, I put it further than that. I see it with a Maradona type piece of play through the middle there. But he couldn't quite get the last finish in there, but beautiful football. Gorgeous skill from a man that Everton were interested in signing this summer, but Ajax is the transfer window wound to its finish just could not afford to lose any more players that's why Edson Alvarez is still here after that very strong interest from Chelsea it's Ajax who lead Rangers by three goals to nil and here is Bergvine plays it into the area kudos first time shot goes behind for a corner quickly to Spurs the team use against Marseille John Murray yes one change from the weekend for Spurs return to the Champions League the Champions League winner Perisic is in for Sessignon lots of familiar faces in the Marseille team including Nuno Tavares who's on loan there from Arsenal Guendouzi's in there as well former Arsenal man and Eric Bailly on loan from Manchester United uh, the former West Ham man Dimitri Payet is back from injury among the Marseille subs Thanks, John. Updates from Tottenham against Marseille to come with John in our commentary of Napoli against Liverpool. As Rangers played around at the back, they managed to deal with the corner just about. I say deal with it. Ayers took it short, played it in. Again, Rangers weren't switched on and Alvarez headed over when really he could have made it 4-0. So a let off as Rangers come down the other end. Kent is in there. Oh, that's just past the angle of post and bar. What a nervy moment for Pass Beer, the Ajax keeper who was stretching, and that is as close as Rangers have come. Yeah, um, really, really good. I thought, I didn't know Kent actually got a touch on it. I thought it was a corner kick. However, down the right hand side, they've looked much, much better since those changes. Matondo actually, given his due, he's defended back when he's had to. He's done the entire side there, helped his full back, stroke wing back, but also he'll get up there wide when he gets a chance as well. So 
he's made the best chance so far that Rangers have had in this game. Game just becoming a little more open in the last couple of minutes. Ajax 3, Rangers 0, Berghaus into the penalty area. Great save by the boot of McLaughlin. Berghaus took the shot quickly and McLaughlin stuck out a big boot and made the stop. Play has stopped now. It will be... Tells me a call for offside. For Rangers, called, yes. Yeah, it's called it for offside and he's right to call it for offside. But that was much better play for Ajax. And maybe Rangers will say, well, wait a minute, we're playing for offside there. But it was very, very tight. Really nice play there. And that was a great save once again. But McLaughlin, so that is the strangest, oddest thing to say. The goalkeeper has let three goals in in the first half. And you're thinking, he's had a good game. And he certainly has had a good game so far. And he's preparing to take this set piece now inside his own penalty area for Rangers. You still trail Ajax by three goals to nil. Midway through the second half, Cholak wins the ball on the halfway line. He's had a quiet night, Cholak, hasn't he? Yeah, well, it's hard to play well when you don't get a kick of the ball because the ball's not up here part of the field. And it's one of those ones. I've, I've watched him a few times when he's had, you know, very, very quiet games and he's, he's not getting any good service. And then he gets the chance of two and scores. So that's, he's one of those strikers, he's perfectly capable of doing that. You put the ball in the box and he's there, he's as likely to score as any other player in this field. Good work by Ajax, down the left-hand side, looking to add to their three-goal advantage. Here is Kenneth Taylor, Bergwijn trying to latch onto it, the shot is driven in and it's straight up McLaughlin. He pats the ball down inside his own penalty area and will prepare to launch this downfield. Sporting Lisbon have taken the lead at Eintracht Frankfurt in Tottenham's group. Updates of Tottenham's match against Marseille coming up on Five Live this evening. Commentary from 8 o'clock is of Napoli against Liverpool. The other match in Rangers group. Rangers who, on their return to the European top table proper, are trailing in Amsterdam by three goals to nil. Yeah, but they can stand a wee bit proud uh, for the second half. Uh, I mean, real, real nice attitude for the players as well. I mean, the heads haven't gone down now. They looked a lot bit, you know, they look very much in danger of going down at the end of that first half. But second half, they come out, great attitude. They chased and fought in battle, tried to get on the ball as well, trying to play out for the back. So it's, you know, as a back five, you know, that they, they have, as you correctly say, when they're defending, it's a five and a four in front of it, one up front. But when they played out for the back, yeah, they're trying to get up there. They're actually trying to make a bit of a game of it. So much, much better. And I, th I think with the thing we're all thinking now, and I've no doubt Giovanni Van Brock was thinking it, and even though he won't maybe admit it, I bet he wishes they started off with this system. <laughs> and if you had to change it later on, you could. Here comes Ryan Kent down the left-hand side for Rangers. He trailed by three goals to nil. A couple of step-overs from Kent. Nice play on the edge of the area. Trying to poke it back to Barisic. He does reach it. Barisic, Curler. Oh, what a goal! What a fabulous goal from Borna Barisic. He's not netted since February 2021. But my word, that was a stunner. And after 12 years, Rangers have a goal in the Champions League group stage on their return to Europe's premier competition. It's Ajax 3, Rangers 1. That is a stunner. And it's exactly the same goal as the one in the first half by Caduce, isn't it? And there's a good argument to which is a better goal. Two absolute crackers. Now, here's a question. Will Ajax be brave enough? Will they still be able to play their football the way they want to? We've not started the game yet. The game yet. They're obviously checking out to see if there was any suggestion of offside there. Well, it's Giovanni Van Brock, of course, will be thinking, please no. And I think all purists will be thinking, please no, because it's another one of those. Yes, we know why VAR's here. Yes, they look at it. They are checking the goal. It's it come up now. It did but cross it's my mind. such a gorgeous shot, isn't yeah, it? But it did cross my mind when it was played out. Wait a minute, got a lot of space there put to the right hand side when it went down uh, to Kent I think it was in the first place so it was pretty tight well it must have been quite tight because they're spending a lot of time looking they at are. it well they have these semi-automated offsides now in the Champions League where they use a lot of algorithms they use a lot of cameras oh it's offside it's offside the referee Tobias Styler has made the television signal he's pointed and the algorithms the cameras the human video assistant referee as well, as we see. And Pat, it is clear, Ken coming back from an offside position. What a shame for Rangers. What a shame for Borna Barisic, because that is one of the best goals he'll ever score. Yeah, he didn't celebrate after it either. 
By the way, all this technology and it take um, five minutes. Show me a still of that and I'll tell you it's two yards offside. It's <laughs> miles off when it came to him. There's not even an argument about it. Yeah, the it. angles weren't really needed as Ajax comes down the left-hand side. Good foot in by Leon King. He's done well since coming on, the 18-year-old. He has, you know, but he gets a lot of help because he's not been isolated out there. He's, been, he's got a player, Matondas, coming back helping him. The right centre-back, Sands, is coming out sometimes. Uh, well, it's actually, it's Lundstrom actually who's fitted back into that right centre-back role. So he's got a lot of bit of help around him, but you're absolutely, he's not left it at all. He's, he's playing against a very, very good player out there, and it hasn't looked as if he's been spooked at all. So well done, man, against uh, Bergwijn out there on the left-hand side. Ajax in possession, still leading by three goals to nil after that Barisic goal. It's chalked off for offside. Sporting Lisbon are now 2-0 up at Eintracht Frankfurt. Rangers fans might have a wry smile at that after losing in such agonising fashion to one track and penalties in the Europa League final last season as Tadic brings the ball back on the right-hand side. Ajax in possession. Ajax in control, but a control that was momentarily shaken and would have been interesting, as you say, Pat, to see how the Dutch champions would have responded had Rangers got yep. that goal back and we know how many times Rangers did the seemingly impossible last season well you need to get brilliant and you also need to get lucky and uh, they got brilliant there but just not quite lucky enough but it would have been intriguing because you know 3-1 they're not giving up that many chances now Rangers has been one or two in the second half but it's not really been like that at all so Rangers just like battle on and maybe get a corner or a free kick and attack it but they needed that goal you feel they really needed that goal to stand Ajax in possession with Timber. They've needed the second half performance though, haven't they? Even if it stays at 3-0, given what happened against Celtic on Saturday, given how they were carved apart in the first half, the old firm derby defeat, a heavy defeat here, had the performance not shifted in the second half, that's damaging beyond just losing yeah, in the Champions it, it could, League, it, it? Because you, you start looking around at your teammates and you worry if they're good enough. You were, if you're good enough, you think, well, why did the manager go with that tactic there? Because we were absolutely shredded. So if it does finish like that, it's a really worrying, concerning time. However, he has changed it. And by the, by the time the next, the second, third, fourth games coming in this Champions League group stage, Rangers won't be as naive. They won't do that. With any luck, they'll have opportunities to, to play Morelis. He'll be back, you know, a little bit stronger. One or two centre-backs might come back from injury as well. That might make a difference as well. Um, but at the moment, you know, they're, they're, they're back in the game, they don't look out of place here. To be fair, they look pretty close to being out of place in that first half. And as Pat says, not any more credit to Van Bronckhorst for changing the system, but it is still Ajax 3, Rangers 0. And I actually have to say as well, I, I think because they are finding it more difficult against Rangers, they have taken their foot off the gas in this second half too, as they have it over on the left-hand side. Well, well, why should they go and hurt themselves, hurt themselves you mean? keep the ball, you know, and one or two chances might come. Now, if they go and attack Rangers and try and play that 100 mile an hour stuff, again, they'll get broken on against a system that's actually set up to do that. So, no, it's actually not up to Ajax to go and play at the high tempo now. It's up to Ajax to say, OK, we've got the three points. Do you want to do anything about it? So Rangers with the throw, trailing by three goals to nil. Napoli against Liverpool. Commentary coming up at eight o'clock with Ian Dennis and Jonathan Woodgate. Updates from Tottenham against Marseille as well. And a reminder that you can listen to all the reaction from this night of Champions League action on the Football Daily. Just search for it on BBC Sounds and download or via your favourite podcast app. Here is Alvarez. He got things underway for Ajax in the first half. Now squares it to Bassi. And again, Ajax, very patient. Ajax as well, who... You have to say that the way that they played in the first half, yes, the setup from Rangers partially allowed them to do that. But, you know, th this is a side that, as we touched on earlier, Pat, lost so many players. It's just, it's the theme, isn't it, at Ajax? They know that's how it works. But it is a side that Alfred Schroeder, of course, their new manager as well, with Ten Hag off to Manchester United as the flag goes up for offside against Ajax, free kick to Rangers. You know, they have, they've got a new manager, they've got new players, they've lost the likes of Anthony, Lissandro Martinez, Nusay Mazzori as well, off to Bayern Munich, Sebastian Halle, Ryan Gravenberg. You know, they, these are big, big players. And they have made changes. They brought in the likes of Bergwijn, who's been outstanding. And 
we've seen again, they've just been able to take that IX DNA and show it off to perfection, really, in the first half. It, it sounds easy to do, you know, you're right, DNA, deep history, all that sort of stuff, which exists within this club. Some of the players haven't come from this club, they've been brought to the club, you've got to learn that. Um, but certainly, they have, they've, they've changed seamlessly, they do look very comfortable about it. And part of it is when you make acquisitions, bringing people that can fit in with that concept, with that ethos, with that attitude, uh, they've done that. That's why they got Bassey. That's why they, they went out on a limb and spent a lot of money for somebody as a centre back because they needed somebody who was a good defender, quick, but also a good football player. And they've got that in him and they're willing to sp spend the money. And you look at Bassey now, I, I absolutely promise you, somebody will buy him off them for more than 30 million. A, a lot more than. And you look at the current players that are going for 50 million, he's an absolute steal. Rangers have made their fourth change of the evening. The veteran Stephen Davis is on for Glen Kamara and Ajax are in possession. Alvarez sends it out to the left-hand side. It's cleared away by Rangers up to Matondo. Leon King again very calmly done by the 18-year-old. Nice little interchange. Ryan Jack then just plays it behind Matondo and the ball goes out of play. Well, it will be a throw to Rangers, might have got a nick off Daly Blint on the way through, it's a little fortunate there for Rangers, but they'll take it, but they still trail by three goals to nil, and the triple Ajax substitution is being prepared here. David Clarsen, the former Everton man, one of those coming on, Lucas Campos as well, their replacement for Anthony after his move to Manchester United, and Yuri Bus preparing to take the field as Rangers spread the ball out to the right-hand side. It's trailing by three goals to nil here on Five Live. Napoli against Liverpool commentary coming up at eight o'clock for you. Updates from Tottenham Marseille as well. You just wonder how, you know, Rangers will oddly get a little bit of a lift from the second half, but it will only be a little bit. Oh, they made a mistake. And Bergwijn could be in here for the fourth. Bergwijn for the fourth. It's simple. It's easy. In the end, for Ajax's top scorer and for all Rangers improvements in this second half, the former Tottenham man puts a gloss on this victory. It is to be disappointment for Rangers on their return to the European elite. It's Ajax 4, Rangers 0. And that one has nothing got to do with anything other than just a grotesque mistake. You know, it's not bad tactics, it's not bad anything. And just like the, I think it was the first goal the Rangers gave away with, against Celtic, you know, when the goalkeeper just basically passes it into an opposition player, that, that's an absolute gift. You give the ball to Bergwijn there, and he's got so much space to go around the goalkeeper, and it's, it's, it's unfair on them. So that's poor play from Rangers there. We've got to do a little bit better than that. Feel a little bit sorry for McLaughlin and goal there. He did, he'd had a good second half. He almost had a, almost had a, a second half clean sheet, but. That was an awful mistake, and uh, we talked about concentration, we lost that again. And Ryan Jack is being consoled by his Rangers teammates. He really had made a positive impact since coming on at half-time, but it's his mistake. And the concern here for Ajax, despite that fourth goal going in, is that Bergvine pulled up afterwards. They will hope it's cramp rather than anything else. It's a stick on his cramp. Yeah. <laughs> it's an absolute stick on, just the way he's doing it. I mean, you never know. I mean, we could have pulled some sort of muscle of that. Um, but it looked like Cramp, the way he was being, you know, asking to be, you know, his legs to be pulled up in that certain way. What's well, a bad cramp, though. He's hobbling. He'll not be back on. Yeah, well, he certainly stretched it out in that sort of fashion as I right, prepared to make their triple substitution. Let's see if they take Bergvine off. So, Yuri Bass, one of those to come on, he's replacing Daly Blint. Now I wonder if Alfred Schroeder is just waiting here to see if Stephen Bergvine is going to be okay. It's I mean, there's no point, no, there's don't no use point him. risking don't him. Use him. No madness. point. Absolute madness. Yeah, there we go. He is off whether that change was going to be made anyway. Big cheers for the man who has just put Ajax 4-0 up. He is replaced by Lucas Campos. And Stephen Berghaus off as well for Davy Clarsen. So Lucas Acampos, the Argentina international. Remarkable story this as Rangers get us underway. He's on loan from Sevilla, 
They brought him in to replace Anthony. Initially, Ajax decided to sign him, so he got on a plane to Amsterdam. While he was in the air, they decided, oh, actually, we don't want to pay the fee. So he landed, turned round, flew all the way back to Seville, and then they said, oh, actually, we do want to sign you, but just on loan, with an option to buy. So, welcome to Ajax, Lucas Campos. He's on the pitch. I think his agent may have a few words to say about that. Oh, well. You've got the front, the frequent flyer points, so give them that. <laughs> That's one positive out of I'm it. I'm sure that'll make up for it. It's not <laughs> the longest between well, you, Amsterdam and Seville. Do you know I'm impressed with him, though, because he's not going in a big huff about it. He just said, no, no, there must be reasons for it. There'll be a financial thing involved in it as well. They want to check him out. Um, but he's turning up here, and he's turning up to play for what is a very, very good team. And if you walk out here and there's 50,000 people, and they're loving it, and they're playing football, it's generally a joy to watch. You'd want to be part of it, wouldn't you? Here he is on the ball, plays it back to Kudus. I think that's the thing, it's, that's what happens when things happen late on in the transfer window. You go, oh gosh, we, we've got to get somebody in. We've lost Anthony to Manchester United. And it seems as though a deal was agreed. And then suddenly you think, oh, is that really what we want to pay? But they've got him, they've got him. He is the replacement for Anthony. And if he does well enough, they have the option to eventually, belatedly, make that deal permanent as Rangers in possession with Barisic just outside their own penalty area. Training by four goals to nil. It's been much improved in the second half, but some of the stuff I have played has been scintillating as Bassing into the penalty area. A little ricochet, half a shout for handball from the fans. Not given. Tadic will play it back. Now it's all the way back in the centre circle with Alvarez. Look okay, at we've been carried away. Bassi's decided to be the left winger for a moment now. Um, he would love to have scored there. With so many picked up the ball, kind of left midfield sort of area. He just hammered forward. He was desperate to get in a position to have a shot on target. Didn't manage it, but uh, it's lifted them. They've got that extra goal, you know, out of absolutely nothing. It's made it four, and I mean, when you come to this stage, there's seven minutes left or so, it's four now. There's such a psychological difference between four and five. You know, you're soundly beaten at four. Five's a hammering. And footballers know that, and they absolutely hate it. Ajax in possession. And having seen that goal ruled out for Rangers at 3-0. The stunner from Borna Barisic. And then to get the fourth, you get the sense now that if there is a team that are to find the back of the nets again, it will be Ajax. As you say, Pat, the Johan Cruyffarina is just lifted once more. First visit here for me, and you, you can tell why it's called the Johan Cruyff Arena. Everywhere you go inside the stadium, there are statues, there are busts, there are pictures, and rightly so for such an Ajax legend. Here come Ajax once more down the right-hand side. Wrench had his shirt pulled there. Referee plays advantage. Here is Ocampos, right-hand side of the penalty area. Wrench has continued his run. Ocampos from the dallies with the blue shirts in front of him, still going. Plays it back to Cruz. Now Alvarez. Ajax 4, Rangers 0 here on 5 Live. Napoli against Liverpool coming up after this with updates from Tottenham against Marseille. As the ball is all the way back with the Ajax number one, Remco Pasvir. So the other thing that that goal does, it, it slightly changes the narrative. When we go downstairs and we're talking to you know the Rangers players and the Rangers manager Giovanni van Broekhorst afterwards, you know, had they kept it at 3-0, you, you can really push that a lot better and say, yeah, OK, got a little bit wrong in the first half. Technically, we're good in the second half. We didn't give much off. We had the odd chance ourselves. And you can really build it up. You lose that goal and suddenly you lose a little bit of the momentum to be able to say that. But don't forget, they did have a good period there for 25, 30 minutes, Rangers. Here come Ajax once more. Ball into a Campos, who shot his straight at McLaughlin on the angle. Rangers players turning around to the assistant referee. It's the most natural thing to do. Say, where's the offside flag? There's no point, lads. It's technically, if it's offside and it goes in the goal, you're going to get your offside. The, you know, technology will help you there. Dangerous ball there across the penalty area. McLaughlin did really well to steer it away from the onrushing red and white shirts. Goodness me, those are the sort of moments that they just need to cut out Rangers. Yes, the game's gone. Yes, they're losing 4-0, but there's been so much more positives than negatives about this performance in the second half, bar the error for the goal and bar errors like that. They, they just need to cut them out. Well, the, the, the difficulty is, so 86 minutes gone, you're basically chasing shadows for most of the day. 
We need to do the same amount of miles, but seeing you're doing the miles and you're on the ball, the week is so much easier. And you can tell that there's a wee bit of mental fatigue as well as you know, physical fatigue growing into that group just now. So they need to get themselves back. It's imperative that all the centre backs they start talking to each other and say, look, get together again. Don't let it get spread. They are just getting a little bit too wide. That didn't happen for that period of time. And that's when you need a good captain on the pitch and you know, whoever it is, be it Sands and Barisic, whatever, just get everyone together close and tight in that back line. Into the final two and a half minutes plus added time. Here at the Johan Cruyff Arena as the flag stays down for now and then goes up. Clear offside there against Davy Clarsen and Ajax preparing to make their final two changes. And the man who got things underway, Edson Alvarez, is one of those being replaced by his very good friend, the fellow Mexican international Jorge Sanchez, who's arrived this summer from Club America. And Brian Proby will be the second player to come on. The 20 year old we joined this summer after spending half a season on loan as well. Very brief spell he had at Leipzig. He left Ajax for them in 2021. Six months there, didn't work out, came back to Ajax on loan and then signed for them permanently in the summer. So he is preparing to enter the field and... Well, he's trying to go on, they're yeah, not letting him on just Fourth, fourth official just checking with Alfred Schroeder, the Ajax manager, exactly who he wants to take off. So making sure that they have the right red number on the board. And it will be Mohamed Kourouz, who's had a very good game. His first start of the season, scoring the best goal of the night. Drive from the left-hand side, a cross goal, in off the post. And the Ajax fans showing their appreciation. Yeah, and if you're a centre forward like uh, Robbie coming on, you would have hoped to get a little bit more. I was watching a team Rangers there that have given out a few chances, far fewer in this second half, but he's only going to get a little sniff, isn't he? Only a minute or so left. With maybe three or four minutes added you know, after that, but in you know, the second half, they've shown that they're a class side Ajax, and the suspicion is they'll probably get out of this group. And I just wonder how far they're capable of going this year. Goldson plays the ball forward for Rangers who trail by four goals to nil into the final minute of normal time. Tondo will pick it up on the right-hand side. Here is Kent, forced out of the penalty area. Matondo once more, ball cut backwards, well read by David Clarsen. And the half chance for Rangers, the half opening is snuffed out ruthlessly by the Dutch champion. Sierra Zacampos on the edge of the centre circle, exchanges passes, Nike's working out to the right-hand side. Now, I was going to ask you, Pat, given that Liverpool are in this group as well, what have we learned about Ajax's contenders? Um, right, well, technically a very good thing. Um, if you give them space, they will damage you. I don't think any of the other teams in this group are going to give them anywhere near that sort of space, home or away. But they've got real confidence, a real belief in the team, and they've got lots and lots of skill. They'll get a few good results in this. They've got a chance of getting through. They'd be disappointed if they ended up getting third, but we shall see. Looking forward to the games between them and Napoli. They'll, they'll be very, very tight games. Into the final three minutes here, three minutes of added time. Ajax 4, Rangers nil. as the Johan Cruyff Arena begins to bounce as Ajax come forward once more. Here is the substitute, Sanchez, plays it out to the left-hand side. Just a little loose there for Taylor, but he does pick it up for Ajax, who have it once more. But they've enjoyed what they've seen tonight. Red and white shirts, the red and white flags waving around us as they look for this fifth goal ball into the penalty area. McLaughlin clears away. And a word on McLaughlin, Pat, because, you know, there were questions about whether Von Bronckhorst would bring in McGregor. I think the press conference put pay to that, but... He's made some big saves. Yeah, he has. I don't think he's done anything really wrong tonight. Um, under a huge amount of pressure, Rangers finally getting another break up the field. How they would love to get the consolation goal back now, but yeah. And I'm really happy for him because John's, he made the odd mistake under pressure. And it wasn't even a particularly important one. So I thought we can, you know, so I thought we home and dry by that point. Uh, another terrible mistake tonight, but it wasn't his. Ball into the penalty area for Rangers, headed away by Timber for Ajax. 
And picked up once more by Rangers. That's a beautiful ball out to the left-hand side. Very well intercepted, though, by Campus before he can reach Kent. But he's given it away. Kent into the area. Oh, it's deflected off the post. Timber coming in, almost scoring an own goal. Kent so unlucky. Rangers unlucky. Really, they could have got on the score sheet this evening. Yeah, I think they just can't catch a break just now, can the Rangers? That offside, obviously, with Barisic before then. This time, Kent, he's, he's had a quiet game. Come off the defender. But they're getting no luck at all. Hits the post and uh, well, at least they get a corner to attack at last. Corner, last chance for Rangers to get a consolation. Barisic with the ball in, headed away by Ajax, but will go out for another corner. So a second last chance for Rangers as Van Bronckhorst watches on from the dugouts into the final minute of added time here on Five Live. Barisic again with the corner again. It's not the best delivery. Ajax head the ball away, helped on by Klaassen up towards the halfway line. Header is one for Rangers and picked up by Ryan Kent. He'll go for it from 30 yards, tried to curl it and it bounces off past Veer. And he just about prevents the corner. Well, that looked like being a very simple take of the Ajax goalkeeper. 38 years old, raises a hand of sheepish apology to the Johan Cruyff Arena, but he did get there in the end. Well, he's probably not really warmed up yet because he's very well to do today. Um, but to be fair, uh, it would have been interesting to see if Rangers could have asked them a few more questions. They couldn't, and it's finished. Well, there is the full-time whistle. A comfortable victory for Ajax. Four goals to nil as Rangers return to the Champions League proper. Ends in disappointment. And Pat Nevin, it is a cliche, but it is apt on this occasion. It was a game of two halves. It, it was a game of two halves. I mean, I, I thought Ajax were fantastic in the first half. Rangers were quite naive. They saw they sent out a very, very attack minded side with, you know, Tillman and Ken and Wright and Kolak, Trollak. And to be fair, that is really, really a big call to do that away from home against one of the great sides in European football. It backfired. It backfired massively on them and they were hammered in that first half. They, they were lucky to get away three now. We've got to be fair about it. They were lucky. Changed it in the second half. Took too long to change, but they were a much better side. And that'll give them a little bit of lift that when Ajax do come to Ibrax Park, it, it won't be the same game. And they will know a lot more about themselves. They'll know a lot more about the opposition. But you learn quick in this competition. Well, you better. Because if you don't, you won't be hanging alone wrong. And that's it, isn't it, Pat? It's, it's got to be a learning point now. It's back in Europe. Let, let's not back, back in the Champions League. Let, let's not dismiss that. that. This is a big night for Rangers in, in that regard, given what they've gone through. To, to the same, what you've got with Celtic and Rangers, you know, they've come in and they don't actually know how good you're going to be against the very top team. Celtic had no idea against Real Madrid. Rangers had no idea really against Ajax here. Well, they've learned it and they'll have to go and put everything they've learned to good use. And I don't think they'll be as open again when they play the next time. There was a huge fear it could have got very ugly tonight at three, but it didn't, and that's one blessing. Five games still to come for Rangers in the Champions League group stage, but their return to the top table of European football ends in a 4-0 defeat by Ajax in Amsterdam.